We get so many questions here at DFB Guide about Disney World breakfast. What am I going to eat in the morning to get fueled up for a day in the parks? And believe it or not, there are a lot of secret tips to know about where to get the best breakfasts in Disney World. That's what we've got for you today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. If you're one of those Disney vacation folks who thinks breakfast is the most important meal of the day, you've come to the right place. But even if you're not big on the breakfast scene, stick around because we're gonna be looking at not just some of our favorite places to eat in the morning at Disney World, but also some of the most convenient and unique offerings that may change the way you look at breakfast foods entirely or could get you in and out of breakfast as fast as possible, which is what you want anyway, right? To go ride rides. So let's start with the breakfast items that'll make your life 10 times easier. With these ones, we're looking for fast. So if you don't have any backpack granola bars on hand, then it's best you learn about which Disney World restaurants can get you some tasty morning sustenance. Super quick, super fast. Here we go. Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe. If you're heading towards Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain in Disney's Animal Kingdom. If you're heading towards Asia in Disney's Animal Kingdom, then you're on the right route to grab yourself some morning grub at Yak and Yeti Local Foods. This quick service location has breakfast bowls and English muffin sandwiches, plus salty crispy hash brown bites that you can add to your meal for $4.99. Now the kids menu has a couple of sweeter options like the pancake and sausage stick or the French toast sticks. But Disney hack alert if you're thinking, aw, I want French toast sticks, then order them. It's totally okay to order meals off the kids menus for yourself at most quick service locations. And more often than not, these meals are going to be a few dollars cheaper and plenty of food. Just saying. Now, forewarning, if you're making a beeline to Flight of Passage in Pandora World of Avatar at the start of your day, then Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe is going to be out of your way. And you may be better off grabbing that Pongu Lumpia from the Pongu Pongu counter service in Pandora instead. That's another one of our very favorites. All right, time to look at a little hotel breakfast offering with big flavors. We're going to head to Polynesian Village Resort, but we're not going to talk about what you think we're going to talk about, at least not yet. We're going to Kona Island now. They don't call Kona Island an island for nothing. This next breakfast quick service is a small island-like location on the second floor of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, right there next to where the monorail empties out. It serves up specialty pastries like the mocha Kona muffin, the banana macadamia nut loaf, and the gluten-friendly cinnamon sugar donut. They also have a coffee bar with an exclusive Kona blend. If you order the press pot, you'll have enough servings of this medium roast blend for two people, which is going to cost you $9.50. And if you end up really falling in love with this coffee, you can snag yourself a bag of beans to take home over at the Joffrey store in Disney Springs. Now, don't go confusing Kona Island with its big sib, Kona Cafe. Kona Cafe is a table service restaurant that, yeah, usually serves up breakfast too, but it's currently under renovation for the foreseeable future. We'll let you know when that status changes. Now, Kona Island only has a small seating area that accommodates about 20 guests. So if you're looking for a breakfast option with even more seating and with the famous banana stuffed deep fried sugar coated Tonga toast option, you can go downstairs to the Captain Cook's quick service instead. That's definitely a must eat if you have time. So Sanaa over at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is one of our favorite places to get a reservation for a nice lunch or dinner with African-inspired options and sweeping views of the savannah in the resort's backyard. Hello there, Mr. Giraffe. But it also has one of the most unique breakfast experiences out there too, managing to be both table and quick service in the same place. You see, Sanaa offers up a kumasha breakfast before switching over to lunch, which acts as a fast casual option for guests before they head over to the parks. You can order entrees that are more common, like Eggs Benedict and Mickey waffles for the kids, or you can order entrees with a little more flair, like the Shahi Tukra French toast made with raisins, whipped chai cream, and almonds. There are also on-the-go options available here if you don't want to take the time to sit down and eat, because Rope Drop might be calling your name. Now, if you need something sweet to start your day at Magic Kingdom, here's another option on the go you might enjoy. We're headed to Sleepy Hollow Refreshments. Now, all you waffle aficionados, it's time to listen up, because Sleepy Hollow in Liberty Square is where you're going to get your quick waffle fix in the Magic Kingdom. Not only can you get the traditional Mickey-shaped waffle here, either dusted with powdered sugar or topped with strawberries and whipped cream, or you can just get regular old syrup on him, but you can also get the fresh fruit waffle sandwich for $8.49. That's stuffed with strawberries, bananas, blueberries, and a Nutella-like spread. The waffle sandwiches are pretty hefty and easy to share, but if you'd rather share a different sweet treat option that's not waffle-based, Gaston's Tavern in Fantasyland does have those ginormous cinnamon rolls you can get instead, because no one bakes like Gaston, right? Now, Gaston's Tavern's also going to give you some, not a lot, but some indoor seating options, whereas Sleepy Hollow Refreshments relies on outdoor seating only, although some of it is covered. But cinnamon rolls and waffles are just so, like, 
earthy. How about we look into some breakfasts that are a little bit more out of this world? Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disney's Hollywood Studios is a place where Batuan residents can thrive. You've got outdoor shops, droids, underground resistance hideouts, and oh yeah, breakfast. Ronto Roasters doesn't have a whole lot of breakfast options, but the options they do have stand out. The main breakfast entree here is the Ronto Morning Wrap, which is a pita bread filled with eggs, grilled pork sausage, shredded cheddar, and peppercorn sauce. And they've also got a plant-based version of this one too called the Triple Suns Breakfast Wrap made with plant-based egg, smoky chickpea onion slaw, and roasted tomato sauce. But if you're not big on the egg options, even the plant-based ones, Ronto Roasters also sells their own version of overnight oats, aka the Rising Moon Overnight Oats, which is a traditional yogurt, fruit, and oats-based mix with dragon fruit thrown in the mix too to give a little color and all-around flavor. Or you can just skip the breakfast game entirely and jump straight for the OG Ronto wrap with roasted pork instead of egg for $12.99. Next, we're headed over to Hollywood Scoops. Why are we going to an ice cream place, AJ? Well, you're about to find out. Before Hollywood Scoops starts serving up its hand-dipped ice creams for the day in Hollywood Studios, you can buy their waffle platter. The waffle platter comes with Mickey-shaped waffles served with fresh blueberries, whipped cream, and syrup, all for $9.49. And if you need a morning pick-me-up, you can also get either a standard Joffrey's coffee or an alcoholic beverage like a mimosa or a Bloody Mary. Now, this next option may come across as a little controversial, but several of our DFB team members are gonna fight for this one, so here it is. Joffrey's is a reliable coffee shop. They've got multiple kiosks around each of the parks, including the ones at the very front of the park, so you don't even have to wait until you're inside the gate to get your caffeine and sugar cravings situated. And they not only have multiple coffee options, including exclusive options, depending on where you are, but they've also got donuts really big, really fresh donuts. Joffrey's Donuts come from Florida-based shop Donut King, which has several different storefronts, but the closest one to Disney World is about a half an hour away from the parks. And though you may think that having them sitting out in a display case for a good long while would dry them up, they are really moist and really delicious. You know, like a fresh donut should be. Joffrey's kiosks are more likely gonna have shorter lines than what you're gonna find at the Starbucks park locations. Not always, but like 90% of the time. In conclusion, if you want quick coffee, that's that's still pretty good, along with a little breakfast bite, then Joffrey's could be what you're looking for on the go. So cinnamon rolls, donuts, and small cups of overnight oats, maybe you need something a little more substantial in the mornings. And if that's the case, you're gonna love this next lineup of breakfast offerings. These are the all-you-care-to-eat breakfast options. Now, Disney World's breakfast buffets and family-style offerings can be pricey, but they may make the price worth your time as long as you're willing to fill your plates again and again and again. So let's see which of Disney World's all-you-can-eat breakfasts serve up some of the heftiest offerings, starting with the deluxe resort restaurant that may have slipped your mind. Over at Disney's Beach Club Resort, you've got the bright and airy Cape May Cafe, which has lots of seating and lots of grub. Around dinner, Cape May has a variety of surf and turf options, but for breakfast, you've got your classic morning spread like eggs, bacon, waffles, you name it. Along with some different options like an omelet and carving station, cheddar biscuits and gravy, and the salted caramel beach buns with vanilla cream. Those are really good. Usually Cape May Cafe is actually a character dining experience where Minnie and the gang come out to greet you during Minnie's Beach Bash breakfast. Although per the release of this video, the character dining is not currently back yet. It will be returning on October 4th. So get your sunscreen and floaties ready for the beach crew. Now pro tip alert, if you're dining with a kid under three, they'll be able to eat at any Disney World buffet for free. Just let a cast member know ahead of time that you've got some little ones in your party that'll be joining you and won't need to be charged a full kid's menu price, which at Cape May Cafe will save you 14 bucks. But when you're making the reservations, be sure to include those kids in the reservations. Now, Beach Club can't have all the breakfast buffet fun. Their neighboring resort, Yacht Club, also has a solid breakfast buffet. This is at Ale and Compass. And it's got a classy and sleek atmosphere, but you do not have to dress to the nines to dine here. In the evening, you got a lot of New England style comfort food to choose from. And in the morning, you've still got comfort food, but breakfast comfort food. So the breakfast buffet here works a little differently than your standard buffets, where you can just start piling options onto your plate however you want. The breakfast buffet options here actually give you access to unlimited side options like seasonal fruit, yogurt parfaits, pastries, overnight oats, and biscuits and gravy. But along with those, you'll also be able to order one main entree off the breakfast a la carte menu with options like the dark chocolate waffles, the crab cake benedict, and the salted caramel apple french toast. Very, very rich food as you can see. Non-alcoholic drinks like tea, coffee, and sodas and juice are also included in the buffet price, which comes to $23 per adult. If you want to skip over all those sides, however, and just stick with the main entree and the main entree alone, you're more than welcome to do that 
add instead for a few dollars less. But this next option just might be our favorite all-you-can-eat breakfast offering of the bunch. We are going to Boma. You'll find one of the most popular Disney breakfast buffets at Boma and Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, and it's popular for good reasons. Sure, you've got American breakfast favorites here, but you've also got food with African influences like the turkey babuti, which is a type of quiche or casserole dish that you're probably going to want multiple helpings of if you're into that sort of stuff. Boma's also got a breakfast cocktail menu. For an extra 13 bucks, you can get one of our personal favorites, the striped and spiked cold brew made with Joffrey's Coffee Cold Brew, Amarula Cream Liqueur, Godiva Chocolate Liqueur, and Whipped Cream. But most importantly, it's garnished with a zebra dome, which is a delicious chocolatey dessert all on its own. But we are here for the added coffee and liqueur that comes along with it. And usually you don't get zebra domes at breakfast, so hooray. And there are a lot of options to choose from here. and You'll more than likely stumble across something new each time you visit. So take time to scope out the buffet before you start piling options onto your plate. That way you don't fill up on a bunch of random food items before you try that one dish you really, really are going to love. Now let's take a break from those buffets and go family style for a bit. Family style offerings aren't too terribly different from buffet setups. You're still gonna get all you can eat food with these locations. However, instead of walking over to the buffet and getting the food for yourself, the buffet comes directly to your table, meaning you'll have to ask your server when you want seconds or thirds of a certain item. Trails End, Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground is all about the family style breakfast skillets here with options like the classic Mickey shaped waffles, bacon and sausage, and cheesy potato casserole, which is absolutely delicious. You'll also get an oven fresh pastry basket and a strawberry yogurt parfait with berry granola. If you've got plant-based eaters in your party, don't sweat it. Let your server know and they can accommodate your family style skillet as needed. And actually, that's a good tip in general. If you have any special diet requests, whether it be breakfast or otherwise, always let your server know ahead of time and that way they can help you order a meal you're going to be satisfied with. Now from one great outdoors resort to another, we're jumping over to Disney's Wilderness Lodge for this next family style breakfast. Whispering Canyon Cafe is another table service restaurant offering bottomless skillets, but this time you got a choice of three different offerings. You can order the Heritage, which will give you a standard variety of biscuits, bacon, waffles, eggs, you know the drill. You can also order the Carnivore, which is gonna give you a bunch more meat-based options like maple chipotle barbecued slow smoked pork ribs, oak smoked beef brisket, barbecued pulled pork, and citrus herb chicken, which sounds like straight up lunch to me, but maybe that's what you're trying to track down. Or you can order the lighter side, which has oatmeal, fresh fruit, yogurt, egg white, spinach frittata, turkey bacon, turkey sausage, country potatoes, and Mickey shaped waffles. But much like Ale and Compass, Whispering Canyon Cafe also has a la carte options you can choose from instead if you don't feel like sharing your waffles and oatmeal with the rest of the table. Whispering Canyon is a solid option for families who are split between wanting a big breakfast or a big lunch, since both types of options can be found on the breakfast menu, meaning while one person person's chomping away on the ham and cheese omelet, another person could be enjoying a hearty bison burger with a side of sweet potato fries. Buffets and quick service locations are great, but how can we Disneyfy our breakfast experiences? Easy, we're gonna turn toward this next group of restaurants, character dining. So if you take a bite out of a Mickey waffle while simultaneously meet Mickey, is that Mickey inception? I don't know, but it's super normal during breakfast character dining in Disney World. So how many different settings can we enjoy a big breakfast while also getting a picture with some of our favorite pals? Let's check out the best of the best on property for ya. We're gonna start at Topolino's Terrace. At night, Topolino's at Disney's Riviera Resort is a fine dining establishment that's great for date nights and viewing the Epcot fireworks from up top. But in the morning, this restaurant is a lot less date nighty and a lot more family friendly with one of the DFB team's favorite character breakfast experiences. The breakfast menu at Topolino's is prefix, meaning you'll have to pay a set price of $42 per adult and $27 per kid, no matter what entree you choose. Pricey stuff. But with that price, you get to pick from options like the wood fire butcher's steak, the smoked salmon, and the sour cream waffles with orange maple syrup. And you get to meet Mickey and his artsy friends, Donald, Daisy, and Minnie. Since Riviera Resort is all about celebrating the arts, the gang has come dressed to celebrate all types of artistic paths. We've got Donald the sculptor, maybe he's an architect, I don't know, Mickey the painter, Daisy the dancer, and Minnie the poet. And they are stylish, y'all, so they're gonna make a great picture to put in your souvenir frame at the end of your trip. Okay, let's clear the air here before we go any further. Many of these character dining breakfast options are gonna be more expensive than what you'll find at standard table service breakfast choices with buffet or family style offerings that have no characters whatsoever. So before you book a reservation anywhere, you're gonna have to figure out what's most important for you. A larger quantity of food for less money or unique breakfast spreads with character meet and greets for more money. No right answer there, just something for you to discuss with your family. 
All right, want to meet a couple of characters that you're not going to meet at any other Disney World restaurant on property? Then you're going to have to head here. We are back at the Polynesian Village Resort to eat again. What can I say? We can't stay away. But this time we're going to Ohana for even more all-you-can-eat options. Ohana's family-style breakfast comes in skillet fashion as well, so it can join the club with Fort Wilderness and Wilderness Lodge's table service breakfast offerings. But with this particular skillet, you'll find options with Hawaiian influences, like Hawaiian-style ham topped with pineapple compote and fried island-style potatoes. You'll also get freshly made pineapple coconut breakfast bread and seasonal fruit to make things even more tropical. And get ready for the best news ever, Ohana has Stitch Waffles. Okay, maybe not the best news ever, but I think it's exciting, despite them tasting identical to the Mickey ones. There's a small selection of alcoholic and non-alcoholic specialty drinks too, like the fruity kid-friendly smoothies featuring Disney animated characters like Moana, Lilo, and Stitch. And of course, the bar opens at 7.30 from what I've been told, so if you want a Lapu Lapu, you can grab it for breakfast. Now, speaking of Lilo and Stitch, starting September 27th, you'll be able to meet the dynamic duo once again during during Ohana's best friend breakfast. We've been missing our island besties for a while now, but they are coming back soon. And who knows, you might also see a vacation ready Mickey and maybe even Pluto join in on the fun. They were there before the closures. Now pricing for Ohana breakfast currently reflects a non-character meal at $25 per adult and $14 per kid. But once character dining returns to this location, you're gonna wanna check those prices again because they will go up. Okay, rare meet and greet characters are too fun, so let's talk about even more of those. Well, sort of. Now there are lots of updates going on at Disney's Hollywood Studios' one and only character dining restaurant, Hollywood and Vine, so let me fill you in if you aren't already. When Hollywood and Vine reopened after the 2020 closures, it featured a prefix dining experience for all of its meal options. But on August 28th, its original buffet-style setup returned. So what do the new buffet options include? Well, lots of stuff. Brioche French toast with bananas foster sauce, salmon and bagel casserole, and plant-based frittata with tomato jam. But one of the biggest reasons to come here for breakfast isn't just for the bagels and toast. It is for those character interactions. Character meet and greets during breakfast are lots different than what you'll get during dinner at Hollywood and Vine. For dinner, you're going to be able to meet the standard montage, the Fab Five, Minnie, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Daisy, sometimes Pluto, all dressed to the nines for a seasonal party, reflecting whatever season that may be during your visit. But in the morning, younger kiddos are going to be thrilled with with the Disney Junior Play and Dine Breakfast, featuring characters you don't get to meet at any other restaurant on property, including Fancy Nancy, Vampirina, Doc McStuffins, and Roadster Goofy. Heads up though, sometimes these characters change out as the shows on Disney Junior change out. So if your kid is like super, super in love with Doc McStuffins and suddenly Doc McStuffins isn't on Disney Junior anymore and they change out the char- oh my goodness, tears can ensue. So just make sure you keep an eye on the characters that are going to be there when you're going to be there. These ones haven't changed for a while. I think they're going to stick around for a little bit, but just a heads up. Now, if you're looking for some breakfast offerings that take a turn for the unique, this next location may hit a sweet spot for you. Tucked away in the African section of Disney's Animal Kingdom, you're gonna find Tusker House, which offers American and African-inspired family-style meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But breakfast is our main focus today, so what else can you expect to see on this platter aside from as many scrambled eggs as you could possibly want or need? For starters, you don't just have Mickey waffles. You've got Mickey and Simba waffles here, which don't taste any different from one another, but aesthetically speaking, I'm into it. And for all you more adventurous eaters, you'll probably enjoy trying the Durban chicken and egg curry with jasmine rice. But adventurous and picky eaters alike can all appreciate the bottomless pastries basket that comes to your table with not only a variety of different breads, but also different spreads like whipped butter, chocolate hazelnut, and strawberry preserves. And let's not forget, we are filling our bellies to get ready for a safari here. Donald, Mickey, and the rest of the gang are all dressed for the occasion with their explorers get-ups. Expect the gang to be sporting their canteens, safari hats, and and in Daisy's case, a rather stylish ascot to pull the whole ensemble together. Once upon a time, character dining used to be only a breakfast thing at Tusker House, but the gang has been showing up for more safari-based adventures during lunch and dinner as well. Side note, though Tusker House is currently a family-style meal, per the release of this video, it will be switching back over to its original buffet-style setup starting on November 1st. Next up on our list, a meet and greet breakfast that's gonna get you energized for the day. Well, or super annoyed, one or the other. So Mickey and friends have been working tirelessly to whip you up a hearty breakfast at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Chef Mickey's is one of the most popular character dining experiences on property because the character interactions are a ton of fun. Mickey and the gang are not only dressed in cute chef's attire, but they're also having parties and parades and napkin twirling contests. So you better come to this breakfast bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Along with traditional 
all-you-can-eat selections, you've got Chef Mickey's signature selections too, which include the loaded potato cheese casserole. Again, this is seriously amazing. And banana bread French toast and celebration Mickey pancakes topped with colorful Mickey sprinkles and whipped cream. If the party atmosphere is a little too poppin' for you adults out there, a magical morning cocktail might cheer you up a little bit. And you've got your choice of bellinis, mimosas, and spiked cold brews, so Chef Mickey's doesn't just have to be fun for the kiddos. Now, the reason this place is so packed is because it's right near Magic Kingdom. It's an easy walk to and from Magic Kingdom, so a lot of folks do start their day here and then head over to MK after that. But I would say that the vibe here is definitively chaos. Um, and so if you want a quiet, relaxing character meal, maybe head over to Topolino's Terrace instead. Now I'm going to start with a disclaimer for this one. The last five character breakfasts I've talked about are extremely character driven, but Cinderella's Royal Table still isn't as princess populated as it used to be. When you dine at Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom during breakfast, you'll get to snap your picture with Cinderella real quick and see her pass by the dining room briefly, but there isn't a whole lot else going on in terms of character interaction. Before the 2020 closures, you used to be able to meet a whole bunch of princesses at once, and you know, that could still be the case later on in the future as more character dining experiences return to normal. But currently, Cindy's chilling at her castle and you can blow her a kiss as she passes on by. So why should you choose to eat breakfast at Cinderella's over lunch or dinner? Simply put, the price difference. Breakfast is going to run you $42 per adult while lunch and dinner will cost you $62. So if you want to save $20 bucks per person to eat at the castle, breakfast is the way to go. Here you're going to be able to dine on assorted breakfast pastries, royal avocado toast, I don't know what makes it royal, maybe like jalapenos, caramel apple stuffed French toast, that's very delicious, and other familiar breakfast items. All right, so it's time to switch things up a little bit. We are in brunch territory now, which you are also allowed to deem as the most important meal of the day because it is. While some locations have brunch offerings all week long, many restaurants have weekend specific brunches that you'll need to plan into your schedule ahead of time. We're gonna start with Grand Floridian Cafe. This is charming and regal and casual and chill all in one. Grand Flo Cafe is a table service restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but also has a hearty menu of brunch options available until 2 p.m. daily. So what's here? Pancakes, waffles, French toast, benedicts, and a couple of full entrees like steak and eggs with a side of cheesy hash brown casserole. More carbs and cheese, absolutely required at a Disney breakfast. But there are two entrees here that really take center stage. The first is the hand-breaded buttermilk fried chicken and waffle with a sriracha honey drizzle, which is one of the most flavorful brunch options out there. It is sweet, it's savory, it's fluffy, it's crispy, it is happiness on a plate. I absolutely adore it. And you can get it with a Mickey waffle. And the second, is the Lobster Thermidor Burger, which is made of an artisanal burger with lobster parmesan thermidor sauce on a seared brioche bun. And yeah, I know that doesn't sound very brunchy, but it's like the best option on the menu and you can order it all day long. And the really nice perk of dining at Grand Floridian Cafe for brunch is that it's relatively easy to get a reservation for since it kind of gets overshadowed by the other offerings at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, but it is incredible. So if you need to make that last minute sit down reservation somewhere, you might be able to make one here and we recommend it. Okay, look out. Here come all those specialty weekend brunch offerings I was talking about earlier. Raglan Road Irish Pub is in Disney Springs and serves exactly the type of offerings you'd think it would serve, Irish pub food. Now, we're big fans of eating Raglan Road's bangers and mash and shepherd's pie during lunch and dinner, but if you come here during the rollicking Raglan brunch served on Saturdays and Sundays, you'll have a few different menu options to choose from, as well as specialty live entertainment and authentic Irish music for brunch and a show. Brunchy options include sweeter things like the pancakes diaspora, made with creme fraiche, maple syrup, and mixed berry compote, and more savory things too, like the Anglo-Irish, made with eggs benedict, sliced Irish ham, and wilted spinach, all on a brioche muffin topped with hollandaise. But forewarning, this brunch can get rather loud with all the live entertainment, and that's still a ton of fun unless you're looking for something nice and peaceful and maybe conversation, then you might need to go to the Grand Floridian Cafe again, or someplace else. I just really like the Grand Floridian Cafe. Now, this next brunch offering, we also really, really like too. It's Chef Art Smith's homecoming. So seriously, it is time to rise and shine at the Rise and Shine brunch at homecoming in Disney Springs on Saturdays and Sundays, just like Raglan Road's weekend brunch offerings. Lots of shining brunch starters and entrees here, like the Hush Puppy Benedict, the fried egg and avocado toast, and if you really love yourself, the fried chicken and donuts. You've also got a full menu of cocktails that stick with the Southern charm of this restaurant, like the Moonshine Mash with watermelon infused 
moonshine, the sweet tea shine, also with moonshine, and the strawberry lemonade. Oh, looky there, more moonshine. The homecoming brunch options stick around until 1 p.m. before switching fully back to their regularly scheduled lunch offerings for the day. Now, the last time I was here for brunch, I had the brisket and it was absolutely incredible. So definitely don't miss it. Okay, time to explore a different type of Southern fare. This time we're doing it Louisiana style with Cajun offerings aplenty. The Bayou Brunch at House of Blues joins the Disney Springs weekend offerings with breakfast burritos, the pig grits and shrimp, which means bacon wrapped shrimp for all you meat fiends out there, the chicken biscuits and gravy, and several other hearty options to fill your stomach before a day of shopping around the springs. Along with brunch, you'll also be able to listen to live music. You can check the House of Blues calendar on their website to find out who's gonna be playing and when. Before the 2020 closures, House of Blues also offered a gospel brunch on Sundays, but that's currently unavailable. However, the House of Blues website states that this option should be returning sometime in the future. Now, what's better than brunch? Brunch that offers free stuff. Okay, did that catch your attention? Apparently, weekends, brunch, and music go hand in hand around Disney Springs because the Boathouse is following suit with the Captain's Sing-Along Brunch. Now, the Sing-Along Brunch is more limited than the last four options we've talked about and is only available on Sundays. But with Sunday brunch comes things like jumbo lump crab cakes, Benedict, Belgian waffles, and avocado toast. But the best part about this brunch, if you wear a Captain's hat or a Boathouse shirt, you'll get a free mimosa. That's right, F-R-E-E, mimosa. And you know we're all about the free stuff. The Captain's Sing Along Brunch runs from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. with dueling piano performances that play between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. So yeah, it's a party up in here. Now, there are a few Disney World restaurants out there that offer up the bottomless mimosas we know and love. House of Blues has them, STK Orlando has them, but our favorite place to grab these endless refills of this boozy beverage are at this next restaurant, which quickly won us over as soon as it opened its doors for the first time last year. Steakhouse 71. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, we love it all at Steakhouse 71 in Disney's Contemporary Resort. But we are here for breakfast today, so let's talk about what you're gonna find here. First and foremost, for a flat rate of 19 bucks, you can have as many refillable mimosas as your heart desires. You can also get several other alcoholic wake-up calls like the Steakhouse Bloody Mary, the Tequila Sunrise, and the Bourbon Cold Brew. And of course, we gotta talk about those hearty breakfast servings. You're not gonna walk away hungry after ordering any of these. In fact, they got a whole breakfast feast, including eggs benedict, scrambled egg, bacon sausage, Mickey-shaped waffle, bacon cheddar grits, breakfast potatoes, and fresh fruit, all for 20 bucks. Not a bad deal, especially at Disney World. Steakhouse 71 also has their seasonal pancakes with rotating flavors like blue berry lemon, pumpkin, and strawberry chocolate chip. Now, are we hungry yet? If you're ready to explore more breakfast reviews for these restaurants, just go to our DFB website for all the breakfast specifics, including the good, the bad, and the runny. Runny egg, that is. is a bad joke. We'll see ourselves out. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.